Hello and welcome to chapter six. Uh, this is a lecture video on elasticity. So we're gonna start our uh, lecture. We're gonna talk about what elasticity is. We're gonna talk about um, four main types of elasticity. One is uh, price elasticity of demand. Then we're gonna talk about the price elasticity of supply. Then uh, we're gonna talk about cross uh, price elasticity. And la uh, last, we're gonna talk about income elasticity. So first we're gonna talk about the price elasticity of demand. Okay, so we've got two things that are coming from previous chapter, right? So we talked about uh, demand in chapter three. So we know what demand is. We know what a demand schedule looks like. And part of the demand schedule really is price, right? So price and quantity. So what we're, we're talking about here is, is we're talking about the, uh, the measurements, it, the, that elasticity measures the buyer's responsiveness to price changes. And responsiveness is in terms of the amount, the quantity that is demanded at different prices, okay? So, uh, so for example, uh, the, the price changes a dollar, what does that mean in terms of quantity demanded, right? So these are two things that make up demand, right? So is our price and our quantity demanded and so, uh, so now elasticity is is helping give us maybe some context so we can we can talk about or different tools so we can talk about really what happens when we when we change price. Okay, remember changes uh, changes in price is what affects quantity demanded. Okay, other changes like for example customers taste, consumers taste, or possibly um, the price of, uh, of substitutes, right? Uh, substitute products, those type of things change demand or the entire schedule. Price alone of the product, of the price of the product changes quantity demanded. So now we're talking about we're, t we're talking about that. So here, here we have elasticity of demand. Really, we're talking about how sensitive is it to price changes and how large is the change in quantity, okay? So a lot things that are very elastic, if you imagine maybe a rubber band that you can pull and it's pretty easy to pull, you can stretch it way out, that's elastic. Large changes with uh, the same, with a, a change in price. Say you have an inelastic demand, same change in price, but now you, now the rubber band that you're pulling that's elastic isn't as inelastic. It doesn't pull as far, okay? So it's inelastic in this case, and that's where it becomes insensitive to price changes. Doesn't change a lot. Small change in quantity, okay? So, so this is the typical uh, formula for price elasticity of demand, okay? So we have quantity, uh, percentage change in quantity demanded of product X, okay? So the quantity is over price. Quantity is our numerator. Uh, our denominator is price. Percentage change in price of product X, okay? So that's, that's, that's the basic format for um, the elasticity, but really the one we're going to use is on our on the next page. Okay, same same idea where we have quantity on top, right, as our numerator, and price is on the bottom as our as our denominator. But instead, what we're going to do with what's called the midpoint formula, and what the midpoint formula does for us is as we have a uh, demand curve, for example. Let's show our demand curve here. Okay. So here, for example, is price, right? Here is quantity. And so here's our demand curve coming down here. 
Okay, so uh, if we use the formula on the last page, then direction of the change of the price, whether it's up uh, or down, makes a difference. Here, let me get my pen out here so I can use my pen, which makes it a lot easier to write. So whether it's up or down, right? Price, uh, the, the direction of the change makes a difference. If we use the midpoint formula, which is this formula right here, it doesn't matter which direction we're moving, okay? Whether it changes from, from so say we have two points, right? So say we have price, uh, first price here, the second price here, it doesn't matter if, if it does change in one direction or the other direction, uh, if we use the midpoint formula, it gives us the same answer. So that's one reason it it is good to use the midpoint formula. It helps us come up with consistent results. Okay, so this is the, this is the idea. So quantity quantities um, on top, right? It's our numerator. So we have change in quantity divided by the sum of quantities. The uh, divided by two. Okay. Okay. So, and then we have the same idea where we have a change in price divided by the sum of prices divided by two, okay? So this is kind of the idea of how the, how the math works, okay? So we're gonna have our, um, okay, so let's, let's say for example, well, we'll, we'll do some calculations later. But when we do this calculation, we have an actual number that we come up with as our elasticity, okay? We're gonna have a unit-free measure. So there's no certain amount of elasticity, units of elasticity, whatever. It's just gonna be uh, the number, okay? There's no units. And we compare elasticities across products and that's kind of where it has context is we compare <clears throat> for example the elasticity of uh, let's say here's an umbrella right the price of umbrellas goes up or down what's the uh, elasticity of that versus uh, let's say we're gonna do uh, ice cream cones here here's our ice cream cone so what really is is uh, is an umbrella elastic? How is it compared to the elasticity of an ice cream cone, right? So that's really where we get into elasticities. If we we see it as a unifree measure, but it also helps us view things in context with other products or services. When we do the elasticity, we get rid of the minus sign. We do absolute value. Okay, so there is no minus sign, there is no po positive minus, it's just it is what it is, we just get rid of the minus sign. And that makes it easier for us to compare elasticities. Okay, so in the end when we calculate, when our elasticity is greater than one, the demand is elastic. There's a great change, right? If we have a change in price, it has a, has a, a great change or a, a relatively large change on demand, quantity demanded, okay? If the elasticity is exactly one, it's what we call unit elastic, okay? So, so relatively speaking, the price change is relatively the same as the, as the quantity demanded, and, and so that's unit elastic, and then where elasticity uh, is smaller than one, that's inelastic. In extreme cases, elasticity could be zero, and that's where we have something that's perfectly inelastic, okay? Where it doesn't matter what the change in the price is, uh, there is no change in demand, right? That's perfectly inelastic. Now, and then there's, there's also uh, where, where elasticity approaches infinity, right? Demand is, and this is extreme case, demand is perfectly elastic, meaning uh, that if there's just even a small, small change in the price, then demand either drops to nothing or goes through the roof, 
right? So that's perfectly elasticity. There's a huge change in quantity demanded. So here's an example of inelasticity, right? So this is what a demand curve would look like. It, it doesn't matter, okay, what the price is, right, over here. It could be up here, could be down here, right? Doesn't matter, doesn't matter what the price is. The quantity is the same, right? It's set. Okay, these, these are for things like, um, for example, uh, you know, price could go up or down. Uh, people that need insulin, uh, for the most part, would buy it, right? Okay, so here, and here's perfect elastic. And so this one is horizontal, right? Where the price is set and if the price changes one way or another, there is no demand, right? There is no demand either below that in price or above it in price, okay? This happens specifically with uh, type of products that are that have almost perfect uh, substitutes, right? So if you had a, like a Pepsi and a Coke machine next to each other, uh, if the if the Pepsi cost well, which may not be a perfectly good example, but it's kind of the same idea. So if you have uh, Pepsi or Coke, and and the the price of Pepsi goes up uh, just a little bit in the vending machine, everybody's gonna ha choose Coke. Maybe maybe not. Maybe some have preferences, right? Uh, so so anyways, uh, total revenue test. So. So this is uh, the idea where, so total revenue is price times quantity, right? So the price of a product times the quantity. And so what, what that's the total revenue. And what the test is, is it says that uh, price, right? Whether it goes up or down and total revenue move in the same direction when uh, a product is inelastic, okay? So inelastic, they're moving in the same direction, okay? Whether it's both up or both down. When, it, when a product or service is elastic, then price and total revenue move in opposite directions, right? Okay? So if price goes up, total revenue goes down, and vice versa. So and it looks like this graphically when we look at it, okay? So if we have, so here's total revenue, right? Total revenue is price times the quantity, right? So if it's, let's say this is $2 and this is a quantity of 10, right? So that's, we'll say that's $20 total, okay? Now the, now the price changes, okay? So here we go. So price is changing from $2 to $1. Now we've got ourselves uh, one times 40, right? So now, now it's, now total revenue is 40 uh, with a decrease in price. So are these moving the same direction or the di a different direction? They're moving opposite direction, right? So what does this tell us? This tells us that they're moving opposite direction. We're dealing with an elastic, right? Something with the elastic demand, okay? Now we're doing inelastic, and so that we would expect these to move in the same direction. So here's something right around four and whatever that is, right? And now, now we change, and now this, this area obviously is a lot smaller, right? So our total revenue here is a lot uh, is less than our total revenue here our total revenue at one is is uh, greater than at two and that's a reduction so they're moving the same direction right price and total revenue are moving in the same direction both are both are being reduced and so we have an inelastic demand so that that's a total revenue test just to test out um our uh, elasticity and this is one that shows unit elasticity so they they're gonna be the same right they're gonna be the same no matter what okay 
And so we also have, as we look at this graph, a one demand curve could have elastic, unit elastic, and inelastic points along the entire curve, right? So this, this right here is our curve, and we see at these points, right, right above here, okay, that we're, we are uh, elastic, right? Above $5 is elastic, okay, right here. $4 is unit elastic, shows us here with our, with our total revenue, right? And uh, $3 and below is inelastic. So that just goes to show that the points, as we as we look at the different price changes, um, we're really looking at the behavior of the curve between the points that were, the, between the prices that we're looking at, right? The changes from one price to another, and so it may change as we look at the curves. It may change uh, just because we have one uh, two points on the curve. We say, okay, that's elastic. It doesn't necessarily mean the entire curve is elastic, right? So we we've got to look at each point along the curve, each each uh, each pair of points, right? All right. So here's a summary of price elasticity of demand. It lets us understand here uh, really what is considered elastic, inelastic, and unit elastic. And, and what determines if something's elastic, inelastic, or unit elastic, right? What determines the elasticity? So these are the determinants, right? Whether something's substitutable or not, kind of with the, like the, our Pepsi and Coke uh, example there, okay? Uh, there's also some uh, determinant, depending on the, the proportion of our income that this per product or service takes up, right? So if something is, is very expensive or or um, per unit or not expensive, then that could also have uh, an effect on its elasticity. Luxury versus necessities, right? Luxury goods tend to be a little more uh, elastic. Necessities a little more inelastic because we need them, right? And uh, also, uh, how our decisions are made, if there is more time available to make the decision of the buying decision, then de demand tends to be more elastic. So here's some examples of elasticities of different types of products. So we, we have the unit elasticity over here, pretty close to unit elastic. We, ha we have things uh, over here that are super elastic. Uh, things that are, tend to be a little more inelastic on this side, right? So some things, that, some things that we can uh, use this new information or this kind of new way to look at demand. Uh, we can look at uh, our uh, different types of crops or different products that we. Uh, that we make, right, or services that we offer. Uh, one, one is crop yields, right? So if we have an inelastic demand, uh, right, and so that helps us understand the, the change in prices of crops go up and down, right? Commodity markets. Pretty common that a crop won't be the same price uh, month after month or year after year, right? It's going to typically go up or down, not very stable. So that helps us understand um, the also in related relationship, if we, if we know the elasticity of a certain crop or a product or service, then we can also know the behavior of the revenue that's connected to those uh, crops, right? 
when price changes up or down, typically. Okay, uh, and and so that helps helps people as they look into the future at prices, uh, knowing the elasticity or inelasticity relative uh, uh, to a product or service. It helps them understand the sensitivity or the risk involved. Okay, in fluctuating prices with certain products or services. Um, it also helps us understand, so when taxes are applied to a product or service, like an excise tax, okay, it helps us understand the amount of taxes that will be actually uh, collected. Okay, if something's really inelastic, it doesn't matter if the price goes up because there's an extra tax on it, then our revenue, our total revenue is gonna be going up relative to, especially in, with regards to taxes, right? So if demand's not gonna change a whole lot, the tax we put on is gonna have a greater effect on that item, like perhaps cigarettes, okay? It helps if it's an addictive substance, right? People uh, need it to fill their addiction, and so the uh, demands, quantity demand is gonna go up no matter if the price goes up or not, okay? Uh, decriminalization of, so like for example, our marijuana question, right? When we had a discussion here about that in our, with our discussion boarding class. Uh, if, it's if it's inelastic demand, then uh, we're gonna have more revenue, right? Uh, that's kind of the, the idea, even if the price goes down or up, um, you know, if it's an inelastic, um, total rev is, revenue is going to go up for people that can uh, continue to uh, supply it. Okay. Um, taxation on that also is connected with the, the item above. So, so we'll go ahead and stop there and then I'm going to, uh, in our next video, our next section of this video, we're going to talk about another type of elasticity.